Good morning, collective. Um, I was nudged this morning um, by the divine to continue uh, with my healing process of exposing the truth of hidden things that were done um, behind my back. Uh, I am going to hone into my uh, sister. Ataria uh, Henson, who is married to Troy Henson. Um, I used to look at my sister as a, I, I looked up to her, okay, because she gave the false impression, which was the same spirit as my mom's spirit of giving the false impression that she's to stand up, you know, God-fearing woman, and she doesn't allow certain things to happen. Um, she doesn't confine that she know her self-worth and all this other stuff, which was a facade. Uh, my sister is a liar, and my sister is a thief. Um, <clears throat> I actually tried to build a relationship with my sister throughout my whole entire life, and she has rejected me. She didn't want me to be around her friends. She didn't want her friends to come around to the house. And if they did, she would literally go to any means necessary to block me out. As Even as far as in uh, going upstairs, telling my mom to, t to tell me to stay away from her and her friends. She didn't want to share any energy or time, even though I wasn't even allowed to even be out or go out or have free access to a lot of things going on around me as a child because everything that my mom and dad said to me pretty much was no that's all I knew was no um and everybody around me including my cousins and things uh people they they had freedom more freedom than me it was either I stay in the house watch tv sit on the steps in front of the front door or I stay in my room so I mean I, I was a prisoner in my own home as a child or growing up period. But anyway, <clears throat> I remember that the year that I had gotten married, which was 2001, um, my family decided to go on a vacation uh, two months after um, my wedding, which was June 15th. I had gotten married June 15th and we went on vacation in July and not July, um, was it July? I don't know. It was either July or August. Okay, collective. And um, I remember we was, everybody had stayed in the vans and stuff until we had, oh, we went to Violin, New Jersey, okay? And the on the, on the venture was for us to go to a park um, in Violin, New Jersey. We did that. We had a cookout. Everybody was riding boats. Whoever wanted to ride a boat, um, we walked the trail. Whoever wanted to walk the trail, who wanted one, whoever wanted to go to the park, they could go to the park. Three thirty-three, as I said that, and um, you know, we were just being kids, and the adults was around. They was doing their own thing, and then after that, the the schedule was for us to go back to the hotel. We have dinner as a family. Everybody pick a restaurant. Some of us stayed at the hotel, and some of us. Um, went out to dinner as a family, a collective, you know, and I remember uh, me and my husband, we had our own room and I was four, four, yeah, I was four and a half months pregnant. And I remember me going to everybody's room, just being excited and happy. I'm newly married, pregnant, um, family is together, going on vacation and I remember me telling my husband, um, Sean, that I wanted to go to my sister's room and check their room out and just, you know, catch the breeze with them, just chit chat or whatever. Just walk around being nosy. <laughs> and um, collective, when I walked to, I had uh, went to my sister's room. They were not on the same floor as me. They were down. We were up. Um, for some odd reason, our room was up away from everybody else's. I don't care. Anyway, um, I went to my sister's room. She opened the door and she let me in. 
And when I came in, the room smelled like sex, but it was more like onions, musty body smell, stinky, musty, coochie, like it was funky. And when I walked into the room, I had saw my other cousin, Kai's wife, Talita Sessions. And she was sitting on the bed, the other bed, because it was a room with two uh, full beds, two queens in there. And she stayed with in the room with my sister and her husband. And I, when I walked in the room, I had this weird feeling but I didn't think nothing of it as far as in the smell. I was I just assumed that I assumed that my sister and her husband had just got finished having sex and people just started coming coming into the room or whatever and they was just, just trying to hurry up and get dressed. But the divine let me know that my lion ass sister, Ataria, who is fake as fuck, she is not a stand up female. She is she is not. She is a liar. She is a cheat and she's a thought just like the rest of everybody else in my family. My sister had a threesome with my cousin's wife. Talita Sessions. Her and her nasty ass cheating husband Troy Henson. Okay? And I knew from the very beginning when I when my sister first told me that she got engaged engaged to Troy and I told her she's making a big mistake don't do it and she got mad at me and told me to get out now this conversation that I had with my sister was at the house you know before we went on vacation she had got engaged you know this is like down the line cuz they had gotten married in um August and it was like everybody was just getting married. But it just so happened that my sister knew about a whole bunch of things. And she kept it a secret that she had a threesome with my cousin's wife. And my father came to the room. They locked the door. And they also continued to have a threesome with each other and filmed it. And my dad was sitting there beating his dick to his daughter having sex with his nephew's wife and his son-in-law. And this went on during the vacation. Um, I'm just going to say to my sister, I will never believe anything that you tell me ever again. You are a false person. You are a liar. You also know about a murder that uh, was done and you're trying to run from it because you don't want to get caught. But I'm letting you know you've already been watched and recorded all your conversations that you've been having back and forth with family members over the phone or you talking to your mother about it by her being bored. Yeah, her being bored, she's just taking on other people's secrets and stuff like that. And y'all going amongst one another, talking about people and bashing them and saying that their life is this and their life is that. When your husband actually had a baby on you, he gave you an STD that you can never get rid of. Yeah, HPV, the human popularia virus. Yeah, you got that. He had a baby on you. He actually kept cheating on you. And that business that you had, that all was a part of him trying to make sure that he had money to get over on you so that he can take care of paying for an abortion because the chick didn't want to get an abortion. She wanted money from the end, from him in the first place. And you made it seem like it was just all her. And it was because you was trying to cover up what your husband was doing. You even went as far as ruining your store to keep people from knowing that your husband had sex with somebody else and got them pregnant and you knew about the situation as long as you was getting money, as long as you was satisfied, as long as you was comfortable, you didn't care about him cheating on you and getting somebody else pregnant and him living a double life and him being sick and him being on on drugs, popping pills and stealing money from people. And you knew about it and you kept your mouth shut just like you knew about this murder 
that your father had done. And he knew about the person who murdered a, per a young lady and left her in the trunk. And you're trying to run. But just know this, you're going to prison because the money that you stole from me that you tried to get away with and buy a house with and that you were getting cars with and that you were using for buying material gain and you were dismantling your children and lying to them and bashing me and talking about me, you are going to be left in poverty. You're going to lose your children. You're not going to have a job. You're going to get picked up by the police. And you think just because you didn't physically do anything that they didn't see you do, that you're not going to get caught. I'm telling you now you're going to get caught. And the only reason why is because somebody fucked up on the paperwork. Yeah, that you knew about. That you knew that your mom stole. Our mother stole from me. And all you made an agreement, 11-11 as I said that. All you made an agreement on with your mom was that you wanted to harvest my energy for your material gain, for your personal business that you were trying to set up for yourself. How selfish and evil and dismantled and mentally unstable, envious, jealous, one up and by any means necessary of how much information that you would hide and how much of a fake facade of a person that you would be in order for you to maintain harvesting off of me. And I've never done anything to you or your children. I've always been a support to you, even down to the point of you getting an abortion because you got pregnant a year after your son. He, he wasn't even one yet. I think he was about 11 and a half months. Technically, you could say one. And I'm talking about Jarrell, your son, the oldest one. Yeah, the one that's the big oompa loompa, the one that you you let get molested, the one that you let mind frame get fucked up because you using him and harvesting off your own children. And the only one that got enough sense and actually is covered and protected is Jaden. Caleb is a karmic just like you, and so is Jarrell, and so is your husband, so is your mother, your father. All of y'all are tainted. Jaden has every right to know that his mom is a liar. His mom is a thot. His mom is a thief. His mom gossips. His mom is a jealous, en envious-hearted, bitter woman. Who don't even like men. So that wedding day that you had. That was a part of your karma. Because you sabotaged my marriage. You harnessed in on me. You talked about my family. And your wedding ended up being a piece of shit. Literally smelling like shit. Collective sewer water spilled out in the reception area. And had, had my sister's wedding smelling like boo-boo water. Roses do smell like boo-boo. How about that? Sorry, Miss Jackson. Anyway, I just channeled that. And then, you know, after her wedding or whatever, my sister was making a whole bunch of stuff up. This woman literally will sit back and discuss your personal business that you told her out of confidence to everybody. Her and my mom sit back and gossip and talk shit about everybody's personal business. What goes on behind closed doors in your home? And they put this for fake facade on. Spirit is saying fake Smiling, smile in your face all the time. They talking about you to one another and they're bashing you to their church people. Ateria is talking your business to her friend Chrissy. 
The one that came to our cookout when we went to Fairmount Park when we were younger. That skinny girl that everybody said that looked like Ateria. This woman knows everybody's business. And she talks people's business. Ateria, you are going to be in poverty. You are going to be in prison for stealing money and hiding, trying to hide information about a murder. And don't forget, I'm, I'm just letting you know now, you're not going to get away with it because they're still going to come to the house. They're still going to lock you up. You're going to call for bail and nobody is going to bail you out because they're going to find out about you putting your hands in the money and the paperwork that you invested in because you wanted to harvest my energy. Yeah. Out of envy and jealousy, the divine let me know what part you played in it. And you're still going to be incarcerated. And by you running your mouth and talking people's business, you're, part of your karma is for you to get your ass whooped every fucking day by female inmates from you running your goddamn mouth. And you still not going to learn your lesson because you're going to run your mouth about the wrong female in there that's that's cool with everybody else. And she's going to end up fucking you up again. You're going to learn how to keep your damn mouth off of me and other people. And as far as this, as far as the murder case that you know about. That you and my father collabed James Taylor that y'all was in cahoots with. Yeah. About him trying to murder me. How he wanted to get me set up. And Roger was included. And y'all sat down in that living room and y'all discussed coming up with a plan to hurt me. Coming up with a plan to get me locked up. Coming up with a plan to get me sent away because all y'all had y'all mind fixated on was a bag of money. I know about everything that y'all came up with. You, dad, mom, and Troy actually sat up and discussed on how y'all was going to get me locked up. And had the law come to my house. And how y'all lied on me. And made, and y'all spoke to Sean. And lied then. And made it seem like I called the police. When you actually called the police. And it didn't go in your favor. It backfired. What makes you think. That the divine is not going to stand and protect me. Knowing that you have underlying motives. To try to send me away. Or make me look like this bad person. Because you want to steal from me. Because you want to continue stealing from me. You knew about dad working with Roger Alexander McNeil, who's 27 years old. Who has multiple children by different karmics and different baby moms who works black magic, who was working black magic on me to steal from me. And have him come to my house. You knew about him sending him, wanting to send him, setting it up for him to come to the house to murder and rape me and throw me in the trunk of a car for money. And you were going to set me up. You are going to prison. Everybody is going to know about you and your threesome. They're going to know about you and your agreement for money with your husband, him sleeping with other people. They're going to know about you having multiple STDs. They're going to know about you not being able to have a cure. They're going to know about that's the reason why your ass has been celibate because you're scared because it's a disease that you can never get rid of. Ateria has a sexually transmitted disease permanently that she will never be able to get rid of because her husband gave it to her due to the fact of him sleeping with a stripper who had an STD and he got another girl pregnant and she wanted money and Ateria went as far as sabotaging her store of business to keep it a secret because she did not want anybody to know that her and Troy was trying to come up with a plan to make money. Because she did not want to work. She wanted to sit back and be a privileged woman. And not do anything. And benefit 
off of everybody else around her. She feels as though that the world is shaped and molded around her. And that's because my parents fake that facade and, and push that in my sister's head to have her thinking that she has every, she can get whatever she wants. And she had the nerve to look at me as if I was the one that got whatever I wanted. It was the exact opposite. I'm five years younger than my sister, and I was treated as if I was the oldest child and she was the youngest. She complained about taking care of me in the morning to make sure that we get up and go to school on time and get dressed. Mind you, collective, excuse me, that was a confirmation burp. She didn't even we went to the same schools y'all the same schools the only school that I did not go to um the same school with um my sister was in high school and in in uh little parts and bits and pieces of middle school because she got transferred she used to go to shoemaker she was scared because somebody somebody in her class a girl in her class got her hair set on fire so it scared her. And she ended up going to Benjamin Franklin High School downtown. My, my sister cut school and my parents knew about it and they did not care. They excused it. They said because she was on high honor in school and she made it on who's who, uh, she was a senior. So she could skip school if she wanted to or she could do a half a day and she had a work pass. She worked in a health, um, a health, um, facility and she was stealing money. Then she was sleeping with people at her job and she made it seem like she just was working and coming home. She actually was sleeping with her own boss, her manager, somebody that was over her. And she thought that this, this doctor that she was working under was going to put, set her up. She literally was going to have him put her in a home and have her work underneath him. And it just so happened that her karmic husband talked her out of it and she stayed back. And she's full of resentment and bitter towards him. So she's going to make him do whatever he's, he can do whatever the hell he want as long as he bring her money back. That's the mentality that she picked up due to the fact of her being bitter because she let a bitter bum bitch man who was a karmic, who had no intentions on being with her in the first place. And he only was looking at her as an opportunity because she was a virgin, as she said. They both was using each other. They're both codependent. She was looking for him for a come up, for him to take care of her because she didn't want to work. She wanted to be privileged. And he was looking for her for sexual come up because this nigga had erectile dysfunction. He was fucking so many people. A sex addiction. He's an alcoholic. He's on drugs. He steals from his own family. He stole from his brother. She even knew about his brother having sex with his one of his friend's wives. And she had the nerve to bash her and say how much of a, a horrible mom and a wife she is when you just as just as bad as she is. The nerve of you. Yes, his name was Wesley. He was in my wedding. He was one of my husband's best men. His his wife, her name was Jean. She was a Mexican. They had a threesome. They was fucking. The, the divine is letting me know that my sister knew about that because she was, she was there. They was fucking each other. And they pushed it all off on Jean and Jamal to make it seem like it was them. When it actually was her, Jamal, Jean, Troy knew about it. Whoever was involved, this was all hidden. Just like she knew about Sean cheating on me, my husband. And she tried to make it seem like she was surprised 
when I had called her and told her about the woman that got in touch with me on through Facebook Messenger, making it seem like she was a family member, talking about since she was trying to find Angie and all this other stuff. And my sister and Troy knew all about it. It was all a part of the scheme. All of that was to get the attention off of them so that I can focus on what my husband was doing to me. But I knew what they, now I know what you would, what y'all been doing. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what plot scheme twist you aided in, Ataria. You're a whore. You're a liar. And I'm not allowed to judge you, but what spirit you uh, acted in was a Jezebel spirit. So I'm going to call that out. You're a Jezebel. You're a liar. And you are going to hell. I'm just letting you know that. And the hell that I'm talking about is purgatory. Yeah. You're going to suffer. Spirit is saying five years. Seven. I'm sorry. Let me take that back. Seven years of karma of you being in poverty. You will not have anybody in your corner, you will be incarcerated. And when you pass away, you are going to hell. Right now, your sentence, the divine let me know. And I thank, I thank God for that because that gave me another part of a healing in the process. He lets me know the judgments of you all who unjustly did things to me. It was just unjust. And you purposely kept doing it. Um, you are a Judas. You sold me for 30 pieces of silver. You did everything that you thought that you could by any means necessary to be covered, to steal from me, to harm me and my children. You done glamour spells on me. You wanted my skin to break out. You wanted my hair to fall out. You wanted me to have health issues. You wanted me to have brain issues. You wanted me to be overweight. And everything is going to happen to you that you wanted to happen to me. I forgive you, Ataria. I love you. I will always continue loving you. But your karma is going to be your karma. I do not have compassion about you receiving your karma due to the fact that you did that on your own. And you were given a choice just like everybody else. And the divine saw to it. And he gave you more than enough time to come forward and tell me the truth and stop lying to me. And you chose to continue to lie. You chose to continue to talk about me behind my back. You chose to continue to bash my child.